As a general proposition, the general population, education is a big issue in the Dominican Republic. Baseball exacerbates the issue. Clubs will pay for kids who are better learners, who've been exposed to an education. Why do you think they're so able to handle that at such a young age? These kids are signing at 16, 17 years old. Many it's because they don't have another choice. Plan A for these players is to make it to the big leagues. What do you remember about the first time you saw Ahmed Rosario? Oof. With his presence, you can tell that he was a special. He's one of the kind. Majority come from very humble backgrounds, and baseball brings a lot of joy and pride. If you explain to somebody, nobody going to, to believe him. Everything I got is for them. This is something special for me. The Dominican Republic, a small Caribbean nation with roughly half the population of New York State. Yet for the last decade, nearly 10% of major leaguers have hailed from the country, by far the most from any one place outside of the U.S. So how and why does a country so small consistently produce such a high volume of baseball talent? The answer lies somewhere at the heart of a nation where baseball is viewed not only as a way of life, but as an opportunity to significantly enhance it. It's a late November day in the Dominican Republic. Back in the United States, the baseball offseason is in full swing. Here in the DR, there's no such thing. While baseball in America is considered the national pastime, baseball in the Dominican Republic is the national obsession. And all across the country, you see examples of it. Scenes like this year round. Kids playing and dreaming dreaming of becoming the next big Dominican-born Major League Superstar. Maybe a league leader in saves. He struck him out, and the ball game is over. Jerry Stamilia back on the hill and back in the fold. Or a gold glove winner. Lagaris chasing back, and he makes the catch. Lagaris showing off his gold glove form. Or a rising star stepping to the plate on the world's biggest stage. Rosario hits one out to right center field. It's deep. Back in the gap near the wall. It's out of here! Ahmed Rosario with his first major league home run. Para nosotros el béisbol es algo ya que que lo llevamos en la sangre. Era loco con la pelota. Yo era era loco. Siempre siempre hasta con guantes de cartón, con bola de naranja, de todo y pelota, todo pelota. Y creo que por eso. In toda parte del país, eso es lo que más se hace, jugar mucha pelota. El béisbol en Dominicana representa lo que es un 100%, ya que es una de las formas en la cual el joven puede sacar a su familia al más adelante, más rápido, diría. When people say, I'm sure somebody has said that when you are born and you have a boy, you put a bat on a ball. It literally is like that. People see that as their future Pedro Martinez, their future David Ortiz, uh, Juan Marichal, for those one, you know, the grandfather that remember, you know, a, somebody like that. Rafael Perez is the director of Dominican operations for Major League Baseball. He understands as well as anyone the passion people here have for the sport. He also understands the reality. In a country where nearly one third of the population lives below the poverty line, baseball is viewed as much more than just a game is a way out, you know. Unfortunately, we're, we're talking about a third world country that has a lot of issues, that has a lot of wonderful things here, but um, a lot of our players come from social economical background that are, you know, very low and uh, with low level of education. And, and baseball brings a lot of joy and pride. It's not a secret. Majority come from very humble backgrounds, um, big family, a lot of times, sometimes they grow up with, uh, with a broken family. And baseball really gives them an opportunity. Juan Henderson oversees a place where the opportunity truly begins for those with enough talent. 
Henderson heads up the Mets Baseball Academy here in the Dominican Republic, a state-of-the-art complex that opened in Boca Chica in 2008. Every major league organization has an academy in this country, each franchise recognizing the incredible abundance of baseball talent here just waiting to be found. With all the respect to the 29 other clubs, I would rank the Mets Academy within the top three. I think what differentiates this academy from the other ones is the personnel. El otro equipo va a estar, va a hacer su throwing program aquí, van a batir aquí y van a mandar un grupo al cage. It's just an incredibly well designed and at this point fully mature academy that is maintained really well. We've got an exceptional physical plant and we've got exceptional people supervising it. Mets general manager Sandy Alderson knows a thing or two about baseball in the Dominican Republic. Back in 2010, there were growing concerns in the league office over a number of issues having to do with the Dominican pipeline. Alderson was tasked by then Commissioner Bud Selig to go to the country, figure out what was wrong, and make suggestions on how to fix it. When you did go down there in 2010, what were the initial findings that you said, okay, this is done pretty well, and here are some issues that we need to figure out how to work through? Well, there were a number of issues. One was the use of performance-enhancing drugs by kids who hadn't even been signed by professional baseball. I mean, these are kids that are 12, 13, 14 years old. A second issue was uh, age and identity fraud. And then there was just plain corruption. And I don't mean just on the part of Dominicans, but also Major League Baseball employees. While it would be naive to think those issues have gone away entirely, Major strides have been made since 2010 to correct each problem. Players are now tested for PEDs before they sign their first contract. A registration department has been set up to limit age and ID fraud. As for corruption, look no further than the recent Atlanta Braves scandal to understand just how harshly baseball treats those who try to circumvent the system. Of course, there's still one major issue where minimal strides have been made, a complex problem at the core of so many others in the Dominican Republic. As a general proposition, the general population, education is a big issue uh, in the Dominican Republic. Now, baseball exacerbates the issue by diverting young kids away from school from maybe an age 12 or 13 until they maybe get signed, maybe don't get signed. I don't worry about the ones that make it. I worry about the ones that don't make it. And that's the real problem. Despite the abundance of MLB talent from the DR, it's still an extreme long shot to make the big leagues. Those who try and fail are generally left with very little education to fall back on. But some clubs are doing what they can to help. The Mets were one of the first major league organizations to implement an education program at their academy. I've always felt that was very important, not just from a personal and educational, humanitarian standpoint, but also from a, from a baseball standpoint. But the bottom line is, to the extent that they get a better education from us and learn some English, they are employable once they leave baseball. The Mets have even gone as far as to provide something extremely rare in Major League Academies. Mental skills classes designed to, among other things, help young players handle the immense pressures that come along with trying to provide for their families through baseball. Most of these guys, when they sign, they immediately become the main breadwinner in their household, and they have a lot of people depending on them, not just their immediate family, but people from their communities. Why do you think they're so able to handle that at such a young age? These kids are signing at 16, 17 years old. Many it's because they don't have another choice. Many it's because that's something they've been striving towards since a very early age. Plan A for these players is to make it to the big leagues. But through our education program, they get the opportunity to finish high school. I can tell you, I received many phone calls, emails from former players that they are so grateful. They get opportunity to go back to school, enroll in college. A lot of, a lot of doors open. Yeah.